our son has gotten into soldering and he's done very well at it. And remind us, how old is he? Just he's turned 12. 12? Just turned 12. All right. Um, but uh, yeah, he's done very well with it and uh, he's soldered two calculators so far. Um, and one of them he's taken to school, which his teacher was completely blown wow. away by. Yeah, I'm thinking 12 years old and he's already making a calculator? Yeah, yeah, he made a calculator. We got a DIY kit from yeah. uh, Amazon and he built it and it maybe two hours of work. It was really phenomenal. Unreal. And his soldering job is really, really clean. Excellent. Like, looks pro. Um, but anyway, he's been asking how to do other stuff. And as we're soldering, he's like, well, what's this? And what's this? And how's that work? And I'm going... I want to be able to teach him these things. I want to be able to explain to him how a circuit board actually works, yep. not just soldering it, but understanding the components and the routing and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, I know you can buy um, just plain boards that PCBs. are just rows of, yep. of, of little connection points, but I want to be able to make our own board. Yep. And so he's asked specifically if we can find a DIY kit for a useless box. You know, that's the box oh, where you okay, push yeah. the button yep. and the little thing comes out and pops it. Yeah. Give it a try. Mm. What'd you do? Are you serious? <laughs> 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 oh, my. oh my gosh. That is hilarious. That is like the most. <laughs> Hello. It's like having a kitten in there. It's like my cat. <laughs> hey. Hey now. So I've been looking for one. Haven't found one, but I found a bunch of people that are like, oh, you can make one using an Arduino. You can make one using this. Sure. And I was like, ah, if I'm going to do a DIY box, useless box, I want to build it from the ground up. So mm. I've been researching how to make my own PCBs at home. Okay. It's actually not that difficult. And I was blown away that... All I need is a laser printer to set my routing, like where the paths go. So you're going to actually etch it? I'm going to actually etch it at home. Oh, man. That's way beyond me, Jeff. It's really... That's, that involves chemicals. It and, does, yeah. but, but a really simple process. So I found, I've done a bunch of research into it, and so I found a, a really simple, easy way to make my own PCB, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So my project for the next probably couple of months because I have to learn how this stuff works, is to design a circuit board, mm -hmm. um, which I've never done before, make the circuit board, and then my wow. son's going to solder it together, and we're going to make our own useless box that I'm hoping to also 3D print the box as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You're just diving right in. I, when I do something, I don't go small. <laughs> <laughs> and you know my approach is a little bit different, because I am very much into, like, I like to learn something first, Yep. and then increase my investment in yep. that process. And, and you're like talking about jumping right to PCB creation. So yes. I would back up. So, you know, if this is you thinking, hey, maybe I'd like to be able to make my own circuits and things like that. My starting point is a breadboard. Yes. And the breadboard allows you to lay out your circuit that you've designed or that you've yep. downloaded a, like a circuit blueprint um, from the internet or however, however you've got that. Uh, lets you lay it out on a on a basically a, a mock PCB mm -hmm. that will function like a PCB, but yes. then you can just take it all apart and put the parts away. Right, and it's cheap, very so, cheap, and it just gets you started. And then the next step for me is what's called a prototyping board. So you get PCB yep. boards that have all the holes. That's right, and they've got solder um, like points but there's no interconnection between them right. so, so you, you actually run wires. run wires or you run a little bit of solder between two different joints for example and you do it that way so that's my second step yes then i would look at maybe going the route of Making actually your etching board. your own um, pcbs because then you're getting into like the chemical processes the yep. and i'm i haven't researched it but um, it's a much more intricate process. So I like it to is. start a little bit simpler. My first PCB I built on a breadboard, very, very basic, but I designed it. Right, okay. And all it is is it takes a 5-volt signal, and when it has 5 volts, the relay is closed. So it has a relay. Right, okay. When it does not have 5 volts, the relay opens. So it disconnects. Yep. So 
the reason that I created that, it's a purpose-built application. So I built it on a breadboard, and feeding at 5 volts is coming from, any guesses? Any guesses? SPC? No. Nope. It's another three-letter acronym, USB. Ah, uh, USB. Okay. USB pulling a 5-volt signal off of a MicroTik router. Okay. And so then in the MicroTik, I programmed code that, said, that basically, to dumb it down, if the internet goes down, kill the power on the USB. Oh, interesting. So then that opens up the relay. And what is the relay control but the power to my modem? So mm. my modem, if the internet goes down, will automatically turn the power of itself off because of my relay right. and wait five seconds and then power back on. So it's essentially a virtual version of, did you turn it off and on again? <laughs> <laughs> because what do you do when your inter internet goes down? You pull the plug from the modem, yes. you wait five seconds, and you plug it back in. And, you know, eight times out of ten, it's going to come back up and be working. Right. So that was the circuit I built. So I built that on a prototyping board once I had it working, and I just soldered it together. And it's a yep. very, very simple circuit. Very cool. And it worked great. I like that. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So tools, what have you got so far? Where are you at? Uh, well, like I said, I've just been doing the research this past week. Oh, okay. so. I'm um, I'm at the buying stage. Uh, so we've got all the soldering stuff. I'm going to be buying the board, buying the chemicals. Uh, I've already downloaded the um, software for designing the PCB. Wow. Um, and uh, I've got a component kit that's on the way with all the resistors and capacitors. Great, and yeah. All that kind of stuff. That's a neat so, thing, too, is that these, these days, I mean... Uh, they, you can't really walk into a Radio Shack like we used to be able to. There, I know. there are still stores like here in Barrie. We have one called Say Al, yep. uh, which is a brilliant store that's kind of like that old Radio Shack where you go in and it's like I just need one capacitor. Yeah, and it's and like here it. you go. Yeah. you know, it's like drawers and drawers of capacitors and resistors and everything else, diodes and whatever. But it, just to get a kit for twenty bucks that has oh, all the kind of like the common stuff, and it's a kit that comes with a breadboard. It comes with a breadboard. Yeah. And so, that was one of the things is, is I want to, like, yes, I'm going to be designing it, but part of the planning process is just, like you said, using the breadboard to figure out how yeah, the circuitry is going to go. Totally. And that's going to be a great learning experience for Luke because I'll be yeah. like, hey, this is, how does this work? And let's try this and let's do yeah. that. And, and then, you know, we'll be able to trial and error without actually making our own piece. That's really neat. You mentioned also Arduino. And yes. Ar Arduino is kind of like, it's a controller. So, yeah. You know, whereas a Raspberry Pi or other single board computer is a true, real computer with an operating system and everything, an Arduino is like you just program it to do a very specific task. It's yep. solid state, and it will respond to. And I think this is why it would work really well an Arduino for uh, for a, um, a useless box mm -hmm. is because it's like it's either on or off. That's right. And if it's on, do this, and then it will turn off. And That's right. So very, very basic programming. Digital right four comma high. high semicolon. And then we're going to delay for one second, which is 1000 milliseconds. Huh. Uh, and then we're going to copy that line. Uh, now, what do you think high means versus low, which is what I'm going to put here? Just a guess? Um, on or off. Yes. So that's what my circuit now looks like. And I'm going to simply plug this into uh, USB power. So I'm not plugging it into the computer. I want to actually power this device and see if it runs my program. And if it does, we should see this light <gasps> flash. There we go. That is neat. Every one second. So we actually created the circuit fairly quickly uh, and created the program to now tell this light what to do and we told it just very simply turn on and off again but if you're making your own circuit you've got to like do ic's you've got to program it yourself yep you've got to figure out how wow i i want to see this project as a work in progress okay and then see how uh, how it comes together yeah sounds good we mentioned the community here on our show and uh, our discord server in particular yes. I've tapped into our community, Jeff, to go in and, and share my ideas for circuits and, yep, and things okay. like that. And there are some folks in our community who are just like way up here as far as cool. their capabilities and understanding of those types of things. 
So it's been really helpful for me as I learn. So oh, I even I fully you. plan to use the yeah, community to work community. me through bugs. <laughs> yeah, and if you're one of those folks in the community right now, just hey, raise your hand and say, yeah, I understand how all that works. I'd love to help, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's something that I think that. Uh, I think that'll make a really neat feature for the show as well as you learn. Yeah, for sure. Keep us posted on that, Jeff. Definitely. I'd, I'd really yeah. be interested to know how things go. Yeah, I'll be posting things behind the scenes. A useless box. Any other, do you have any ideas yet? I, I get excited when I invent, like when I think of something. Have you had any of those moments where I'm like, I really wish I had something that would do this, but it doesn't exist? This is where 3D printing is interesting to me because I'm creating things that don't exist yet. I, I haven't really thought that far as to what exists and doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, no, I haven't really thought that far. Come up with some ideas. Yeah. And but share I'm, those. There's, with there's us. a ton of things for sure. Yeah. Like I've always wanted to do um, a, um, a house wide sound system that mm -hmm. links up to, um, you know, our our Amazon device and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I would like to have sensors where when I walk from one room to another, the motion sensor kicks in and it will shut off the one room speakers and add it to where I've just gone. Hmm. That's way more advanced, but that's probably the only thing I can think of where I'm like, I want to do this. But see, you talk about that and then I think, okay, well, you could use a passive infrared sensor, yep. which is used in motion sensors. You could use a laser sensor, mm -hmm. but PIR is very, very cheap. Yes. Yep. And it's just a little sensor that it's like, okay, there was motion, do something. Yep. So you could create something, again, with a relay that controls just whether the speaker has a completed circuit or not. Yeah. So if it was just a, a bunch of speakers connected through an amplifier, you could have relays set up with PIR sensors that you'd be able to control hmm. by motion. Yeah, good. And if there's no motion for 10 minutes, turn off the then speaker off. automatically yep. or something like yep. that. Exactly. So, like, these kinds of ideas, like, there's so much stuff that you can do when you start cool. to understand. And then there's the whole flip side of it where something breaks and you can fix it. Yes. That's a good feeling. And that's done. We've done that already. Yeah. My, uh, so, you know, you can get those little battery testers. Um, like to check the charge of a battery? Yeah. yeah. So we had one of those. <laughs> and it's funny, when my son was building his calculator, we weren't sure if the batteries were working and yes. we weren't getting anything. I'm like, this is odd that we're not getting, any usually even if it's dead, it pops into the red, but there was nothing. So we opened it up. Turns out the actual connection had broken apart. Okay. How? I have no clue. Yeah. And my son's like, oh, I can fix that. Beautiful. And he fixed it and we put yeah. it back together and then we, and it works. And it's like, oh yeah, that's a dead battery. <laughs> yeah. I can relate to that too. I, I use a pillow speaker for podcasts. Okay. Yep. And uh, because it's, you know, connected by a wire to my phone, it gets pulled. Yep. And it got pulled right out. So uh, it's such a simple thing. But oh, I totally. What did I do? Didn't buy another one? No. No, you just No. It. I took it apart and I resoldered it and reinforced it so it wouldn't happen again. Oh, beautiful. It made it better than it was. He's he's turned his mind towards things like uh, e-waste. Yes. And he's like, if somebody's going to get rid of their TV or yeah. computer monitor, chances are it's still working, dad. It's just something inside broke. Mm -hmm. He's like, I can fix it. I'm like, yeah. You think about that. And so his wheels are turning and last mm -hmm. and he's like, can I do these things and then sell them? 12 years old. That's a career in and of right? itself. Trades yeah. are really a, a valuable, uh, like it's really valuable to have those capabilities. So I'm going to train him up for the next, uh, well, he's 12. So in eight, six years, I'm retiring. He's going to pay for the rest <laughs> of my life. <laughs> I had a monitor come in. I don't know, maybe a 23-inch or 24-inch oh, widescreen, beautiful monitor came in as e-waste. And um, so I'm like, hmm, I'll take a look. And so my daughter and I looked at it. And there was a single capacitor that was burnt out. So I went online and I bought one of those capacitors. They sell them in packs of three, and it was $12. Oh, so come on. For $12, we got a pack of three. We replaced one of those capacitors, and that monitor is now sitting on my daughter's desk. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. It's wonderful. And he's absolutely right. But not only can you <sighs> fix stuff, Jeff, let's say something comes into e-waste, or you, you, know, you find something at the side of the road that someone's just discarded because they, they don't know how to fix it. Um, and maybe if fixing it is more expensive than buying a new one in a lot of cases, too. Mm -hmm. um, you can, even if you can't fix it, 
you can do what's called desoldering. That's right. So you can remove all the good components from that and put them in a drawer organizer. Yes. So that you can then have your own Radio Shack at home where you've got the drawers of all these different parts. Yep. And then when something breaks, you don't have to spend $12 online to buy them. I wish I had known he was going to get into this because mm -hmm. in the summer, I had about four computers, a couple projectors. We took them all to e-waste. Oh. I was like, oh, I could have dismantled that. Oh, sure. Yeah, so, got them. Oh, Take well. the parts out. We live and learn. Yeah, exactly. Very so, cool. Oh, keep yeah. us posted on that, Jeff. Yeah, definitely. And hey, comment below. Tell us about some of the exploits that you've had uh, with regards to, to these kinds of um, topics and and if there if it's something that interests you that you've never gotten into hey comment below as well we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to have you as a part of that process as Jeff is learning um, as I'm also learning and getting more and more into those types of like component repairs and and uh, circuit boards and everything else it's a lot of fun yeah it's a great hobby and a wonderful career if you really want to do it as well mm -hmm. so it's true good for your son I'd like yeah. to hear how he enjoys it. So when he's, um, I guess, 13 plus, so next year, you can bring him into the studio and uh, he can show us how he's, how he's making out. Sounds good. Very cool. Make it happen.